Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to talk for a couple minutes about a movie trailer that I just saw for a film called Dear Santa, where it's like, I believe the second time in two years that we have seen in Hollywood, this misspelling of Santa to Satan. The first time was on Disney Plus with the Santa Claus movie. And now it's through this film with Jack Black. So I wanna talk about it for a couple minutes because Obviously, there's this huge problem in Hollywood, by and large, with just glorifying the devil and creating this image of the devil where it makes him out to be kind of cute and kind of funny and whatever. And so I want to talk about how dangerous that is. But first, I want to say that I am live on this channel every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Central Time. If you don't know that already, go back and check out all my previous live streams. You can find them under the live tab on my YouTube home channel, and that's like where 85% of my content is. So definitely go there, but first, let's watch this trailer together. First of all, this is a, um, this is a PG-13 rating, and you can kind of tell by that last scene with the, with the fart joke, like it's obviously geared toward a, a younger audience. So it's supposed to be another family holiday movie, like let's all gather around the Christmas tree and, you know, drink our hot cocoa and watch a movie about the devil just being this cute, funny comedian. Like, it's just so weird, but there, there's a couple things. So first of all, you know, like the beginning, the um, letter goes down the chute and it's in hell and it's always painted like that in Hollywood, like the, the that hell is the devil's home, as in it's a place where he just sort of like sits on a throne, like he owns hell, he rules and reigns over hell, but that is not true at all. Like Satan is, is destined for hell. He's not there now. He's actually roaming the earth right now, seeking whom he may devour, the Bible says. But hell is reserved for his eternal torment, not his eternal reign. It's not like his lair where he just like goes and and gathers a bunch of souls and and gets to do whatever he wants. Like Satan is going to be tortured in hell for eternity. But it's this this classic storyline that we always see popularized in Hollywood. And what that does is it gives him way more credit. It gives him way more power and makes him seem like he is in such a place of prestige. And he's just not like he is literally under God's heel. He's under Jesus's heel. He's under the heel of every spirit filled believer, by the way. And he is absolutely not going to have fun in hell. Nobody is going to have fun in hell, but they always paint hell to be that kind of fun place where it's like a party for sinners or like we all just go to sip beer and and thrive in our sin and laugh and indulge and not care. But it's not that at all. It is a place of eternal torment, which is eternal separation from God. Like you got to understand everything good that you've ever experienced in life, peace, joy, hope, love, kindness, gentleness, patience. Those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So they can only come from the Holy Spirit because anything that is antithetical to that comes from a different spirit and, and Satan cannot produce those things. He can pervert those things. He can pervert joy into happiness. Like he can pervert love into passion and stuff like that. But the actual authentic fruit of the spirit, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from the father of lights ab above. So anything that is genuinely good that you have experienced in this life comes from God. And so hell is eternal separation from all of the above. And Satan doesn't have any rule or reign there the way that he does here on earth. So there's no perversion, you know, there's no perversion potential for those like counterfeit feelings, for those temporary high, there's nothing like that because the devil's power to do those things, to give you those false sensations, he can't do that because he's suffering in eternity. So that's what you're going to be doing as well. But they always make it seem like it's just like this fun place where the devil sits on his throne, cracks open a beer or whatever. And that is so intentional. Okay. It's so intentional. And I'm going to talk about why, but, but first I want to talk about the second farce in this trailer is this like whole idea of selling your soul because you can't like, you cannot sell your soul to the devil. You just absolutely can't. Your soul belongs to God. Your soul belongs to God. But the thing is your soul was born in sin and shaped in iniquity through the corruption of an evil and fallen world that is in partnership with sin. So it's positioned to hell because of that. 
And your soul goes there if your spirit has not been regenerated in new life and born again. That can only happen through the power of the Holy Spirit who redeems us through faith in Jesus Christ where we are thereupon saved by grace because of the finished work on the cross. Hallelujah and amen. But this whole narrative of like selling your soul to the devil, it paints a picture, again, that Satan has a lot more power than he really does. And it also paints this narrative where you can bargain with the devil. Like, like you can kind of gamble with him. You can make deals with him. You can cut deals with him. And you can't do that. You can't do that. Why? Because the devil doesn't bargain. He doesn't bargain with you. He steals. He takes. He corrupts. He perverts. Again, he counterfeits. He lies. He he murders. The, the Bible says that to lie is his native tongue. You have to understand he never takes a break in lying. He never takes a break in deception. And he hates you. He absolutely hates you. And movies like this, movies like this humanize Satan. So it allows you to put your guard down because of that. You know, we see Jack Black, we know him as like this funny guy. So it makes Satan out to be this funny guy or this not so bad guy or this like uncle guy, right? I reckon by the end of this movie is what you see toward the end there that he and the child likely have some sort of understanding or the kindness of the kid transforms Satan or whatever, but it doesn't work that way. You don't bargain with the devil. Again, it doesn't work that way. Humanity cannot redeem evil because humanity itself is entrenched in evil. We cannot redeem ourselves from that, and we certainly can't redeem Satan from that. Humanity doesn't redeem humanity. Humanity doesn't redeem Satan. Jesus redeems humanity. But there is no redemption reserved for the devil, which is why he has a redemptive quality through Hollywood, through pop culture, through mainstream media by and large. Because there is no redemption for him and he knows that. And he hates humanity because of that. Because we do have that redemptive quality to us. It is God's literal plan is to redeem humanity. Why? Because we're, we're, we're the only ones created in his image and likeness that he delights in, that he loves. He loves us. And Satan hates that. Not because he, he wants to be redeemed. Not because... He wants to be in heaven. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that he is not the one on the throne. So he's not the one that gets to call those sorts of shots. That's what he hates. So he has to pervert it in a way to obtain a sort of worship status because that's all, that's what he wants at the end of the day is he wants to be worshiped like God is worshiped, but he knows that he doesn't have the sovereignty of God. So what does he do? He has to, you know, paint this narrative in mainstream media. Oh, sell your soul to the devil and stuff like that. Because the truth is he doesn't have that sort of power. But here's the thing. We give Satan, the world gives Satan, Hollywood gives Satan this sort of like platform of grace because God has none for him. And what I'm trying to get at is this whole thing checks out biblically because the thing is, Satan is the prince of this world. The Bible calls him that. And the Bible also says that the world is thus under the sway of him, of, under the sway of the evil one. And that the devil can give you the kingdoms of this world if you worship him. He can't take your soul but what he can do is deceive you into worshiping him. You can either worship him overtly or covertly. He doesn't care just as long as you bow down. And yeah, he can give you the kingdoms of the world. And Hollywood is a kingdom of the world. And that's not to say that there aren't godly men and women in Hollywood. Of course there are. And we should partner with them in prayer. Um, but, you know, by and large, Hollywood is a kingdom of the world. And so that is a dominion of the devil. 
where we just see this so rampant throughout culture. We see it so rampant in the kinds of movies that are produced, television shows that are produced, music that is produced. It's all indulgent in sin. It's all indulgent in perversion. It's all indulgent in wickedness and lust and blasphemy and all of these things that just God absolutely hates. So therefore it can never be of God. It can never actually come from God. And so this all checks out and that is why Satan redeems himself through these modalities. He gives himself grace because God has none for him. So because there is no redemption for Satan, humanity redeems Satan through the worldliness of Hollywood. Does that make sense? But the point of the point is is that you know, I'm not trying to give this movie more power than it has by encouraging you to not go see it or make it to be like some thing where you know, I'm telling you you're going to get demons, you're going to open doors like open doors aside, that's not the point. The point is the greater agenda of the kingdoms of the world to illustrate Satan in a way where he is antithetical to everything that scripture describes him to be, to everything that Jesus, that God himself tells us that he is, which is he's a, a murderer, he's a thief, and he is a destroyer, he is a liar. He is, he is a pervert, he is a corrupter, and he never sleeps, he never eats, he never stops. His only purpose is to deceive you. And again, he never takes breaks. And his hatred for you never subsides. So it's not about open doors or, or whatever. This is about, do not watch this movie that humanizes Satan because you don't want your guard to go down. Don't underestimate the way that this wicked devil can deceive you or more importantly, deceive your children because it's really the children he's after. This is a PG-13 movie. Again, we have fart jokes to appeal to a certain audience for a reason, right? So movies like this as innocent and, you know, it's just entertainment. Don't take it that seriously. That's exactly what the devil wants you to think. Because movies like this, it, it makes him as like out to be a sort of joke, right? Where we don't believe he has any real power necessarily. So therefore, Christianity looks like a joke and everything that the Bible says is a joke and preaching about hell and preaching about sin and preaching about salvation, it all seems like a big joke. Or, you know, on the flip side of that, not only is Satan not as bad as he seems, he could actually be someone that you're friends with. Or in movies, or I'm sorry, shows like Lucifer Lucifer on Netflix, like he's someone that's like sexy and mysterious and beautiful, etc. Like it's always causing us to see Satan as someone who is like misunderstood through the worldview of the Christian. And so then we have the Satanist worldview where he is liberating. And that literally is, by the way, the definition of Satanism is that. They don't necessarily worship the devil. They worship the devil as a metaphor of freedom, of just being yourself because hell isn't real. So just be who you are, YOLO, you know, all the classic Aleister Crowley, basically witchcraft doctrines, um, antichrist doctrines, I should say. So this is the, this is the goal. This is the goal. Movies like Dear Santa. As ridiculous as it seems, you have to understand that the devil is working hard. Like he's working overtime. He doesn't care what modality he does it through just as long as he can do it at all. Again, because he can't have your soul. It's not his to have or to buy or to purchase or for you to sell to. But he can have your worship even if it's covertly. And then your soul will never be redeemed because of that, see? And it's not about Satan having dominion over you for eternity in hell because, again, he won't. The whole point is that misery loves company. He doesn't want your soul to be bought back to the reconciliation of God because 
that would grieve God's heart for you to not be in, in his presence to delight in and worship in forever. And because Satan's going to be tormented, he wants you to be tormented right alongside him. Not because he's going to be the one tormenting you, but because you won't be with God and that grieves God's heart. And that's the only sliver of satisfaction the devil is left with because he knows his fate. And this isn't a joke. Like, this isn't a game. This is real. I know I sound like a crazy person. I don't care. This is the Bible. And your eternity matters. Your soul matters. So I want you to be cognizant of this stuff, aware of this stuff. Because you know that saying, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist? I actually disagree. I think that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world that he's not as bad as he actually is. And I think that is far worse than convincing the world that he doesn't exist at all. So, look, I'm not saying don't see this movie because you're going to hell if you see it or like you're going to open a door for demons or whatever. The, the point is that it glorifies the devil and it illustrates a picture that is antithetical to the Bible. And it definitely has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. If anything, it is an antichrist message because it, again, paints this, this idea that humanity is of a redemptive quality to restore evil back to goodness. And we, we can't do that. We can't restore ourselves and we certainly can't restore the devil and humanity and the devil flirting with each other can't restore evil to goodness either. Like it, Jesus restores humanity. So that's the point, and that's what we have to keep our focus on, our eyes on. Do not indulge in this movie. It is so much more than entertainment because this narrative, this sinister agenda is ultimately Satan's way to garner whatever worship, whatever grace that he can get. And he's going to do it through your ignorance, so don't be ignorant of it. Just mark and avoid this movie. Mark and avoid movies and shows like it. Just say no. And, you know, be prepared to contend for your faith so you can have this conversation with friends and family and even your kids. When their friends are going to see it and they're not, you can explain to them why. You know, the devil's not stupid, but he uh, kind of he kind of counts on you being stupid. And I'm just going to say it like it is. He is so crafty and cunning and wise. This is why scripture tells us to be as wise as the serpent, because the serpent is the one that deceived even the garden. So we have to be able to think the way the devil thinks in order to have victory over him. That old, you know, notion in the art of war is to know thy enemy. He knows you. That's why the word of God says that he prowls like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's devouring you for a lack of vigilance. He's devouring you for lukewarmity. He's devouring you for just writing stuff like this off as just a silly, dumb movie. He's writing you off or he's, he's devouring you for putting your guard down. He's devouring you for humanizing him. He's not your friend. He's not your pal. He's not a cute uncle. He's not Jack Black, okay? He is wicked. Don't let your kids see this movie. So, yeah, um, let me know in the comments what you think about movies like this. If there are others that you can think of where you, you've just kind of seen this theme popularized, where the devil is just like this glorious, fun, cutesy guy sort of thing. I'd love to talk about it with y'all in the comments. And again, come back and see me every Thursday night, 6 p.m. Central Time here on the channel. Go through the live tab for all my past streams. And if you are blessed by Heaven and Healing Ministry, do consider partnering with us. There are ways to do so below in the episode description. You can sow a one-time offering or you can become a monthly partner, whatever God puts on your heart today. Follow me on Instagram, Angela Marie Scafidi. Subscribe to this channel and like this video if you haven't already done so. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.